Hello, my name is Chef Judson Todd Allen, and I am a national board member of the American Liver Foundation, uh, originally from Chicago, Illinois, and I am currently the CEO and executive chef of Healthy Infused Cuisine and author of my new book, The Spice Diet, using powerhouse flavor to fight cravings and win the weight loss battle. Today, we're gonna to go over something that's near and dear to my heart, uh, which is all about healthy eating and understanding, our, understanding and uncovering our food personalities and using powerhouse flavor to fight those cravings that we all face uh, in everyday life. First, I'm gonna give you a little bit about my personal story and my passion for food. Uh, ever since I was a child, I struggled with my weight. Uh, I tell people that I used to dream about food when I was a kid. And little did I know that uh, when I was a child and I was dreaming about food and, again, had a very deep passion for it, uh, back then I did not realize that it was the beginning of a food addiction for me. Uh, so as, a, as being, a, being addicted to food comes food cravings, comes a lot of other things that come with the passion for food, which is, of course, weight gain. Uh, I was at my highest weight at over 360 pounds, and it wasn't until I decided to take a healthier lifestyle journey for myself where I began to think and feel, uh, where, excuse me, where I began to think uh, and approach food from a healthier perspective using spices uh, and using flavor. Back when I was a child or when I was younger and growing up uh, also into my adulthood years, I associated flavor with fat, salt, sugar, and of course, processed foods. Uh, but the older I got when I embarked on a healthier lifestyle journey for myself, I realized that true flavor lied in the spices that we use and it lied in creating healthier dishes without the fat, the salt, the sugar, and the other different things that was not good for me. So today we're going to get into that. Uh, I was able to successfully lose over 160 pounds. And for anybody that has dealt with an addiction or has gone down that road, they, uh, we recognize that this is something that we have to be cognizant enough for the rest of our lives. So I tell people all the time that my, the struggle is not over. Uh, and uh, knowing about food cravings, knowing how to attack food cravings, and knowing how to move forward and create dishes that are healthy and that are most importantly, I think, flavorful, can help us along a journey toward weight loss, towards healthy living, and towards a healthier new us. Going through this journey really sparked my uh, interest in telling my story. Uh, there's, it's one thing to have experience and go through something in our lives and hold it uh, only to ourselves. But it's when we're able to realize that what we have gone through, in my case, struggling with a food addiction and weight issues and all that comes along with that. And sharing that journey with other people can really help to change other people's lives. So I decided to write my book, The Spice Diet, which really gets into uh, expressing my personal story. It is a testimony of what I went through. It is a story of inspiration and encouragement for those that may be going through weight issues. Uh, and it also is for those individuals that are, are food enthusiasts or love to cook or just love healthy food that want to learn more about how how they can bring flavor and spices into their dishes. One thing that the Spice Diet offers is a very succinct and very comprehensive approach to introducing different spices and how they pair nicely with different ingredients. So for example, I tell you how to pair pepper and turmeric and uh, maybe some almonds or pecans. So we take some of those healthier ingredients for us and we may pair them with chicken or fish. 
and it creates an experience. It creates a flavorful meal. So I talk about those things and I give you uh, the different spice blends. I give you the different uh, ingredients that work together that yield a flavorful, amazing eating experience for people. So that is what the book offers. We also get into uh, some very simple, easy exercise tips that you can use using band exercises. And of course, the book offers over 70 very simple, easy, healthy recipes that are inspired by the different spices, that use the spices, and most importantly, are packed with powerhouse flavor. So the Spice Diet will lead you on an introspective journey to really determining your food vices, and of course, how to combat them with easy, flavorful, and healthy meals. The book launched in January uh, 16 of 2018. Uh, the book is available uh, for sale on Amazon, Barnes and Nobles. It is available in local bookstores and Walmart. Um, it is also available in the stores at Barnes and Nobles. So I encourage you all to please pick up a copy and uh, really understand just truly how important, how vital spices are, uh, not only to our health uh, medicinally, but to building flavor profiles into everything that we eat. Uh, just to give you all just a few statistics, uh, many of us know these things already. We know that uh, weight issues, that obesity is at epidemic levels uh, right now in the United States. Uh, but here are just some quick statistics for you. More than two in three adults are overweight or obese. Nearly three out of four men are overweight or obese. Nearly three out of five women are are overweight or obese. And one in three adults, which is maybe 78 million individuals, have obesity in the United States. So as you can see here, uh, of course, it is it has reached epidemic levels and many uh, of us are struggling. Uh, obesity uh, is that one thing that, that does not look at color, sex, gender, race, whatever. It affects us all, and it affects us all in a very serious way. And the Spice Diet, the information I'm going to be presenting with you, is designed to really help uh, to attack these alarming rates of obesity uh, in the United States. So let's talk about food cravings. Food cravings are uh, those things that really, really, really take an effect on, on our everyday lives from uh, being addicted to sugar, being addicted to salt or craving fatty foods or being, you know, craving crunchy foods. Food cravings affect us all. Uh, as I was embarking on my personal uh, journey towards weight loss, uh, I was, addicted, like I said, to food. And I had so many food cravings. Uh, you hear of individuals that may have a salty craving or a sweet craving. I had a craving for everything, <laughs> uh, be it fatty foods, be it salty foods, be it sweet things. Um, I just enjoyed food. And food had a strong hold on me. Uh, it's important to know that the junk food that we eat triggers the reward circuits in our brains, right? And it involves pleasure, memory, and motivation. So all of these things work toward uh, affecting our brain, right? And when we get these cravings, all of it is very scientific, right? So of course, when we get these cravings for sweet things, what do we do? We go out and we purchase sweet sweet products. We purchase the sweet rolls and the donuts. Uh, when we want something salty, we may get bags of potato chips or, or other salty junk food. Uh, but these are the things that are, that are really uh, taking a toll on, on our lives and, and affecting us. So let's get into that. As I talk about the food cravings, one thing that I had to realize for myself and really get to the root of is food personalities. So I had to really come to terms of, uh, come to grips with uh, the food, what my food personality was. And what I did is I put them into nine categories. And I'm going to go over those with you all. So I call these my nine food personalities. 
And you'll find that many, some of these you all can relate to. I know I could literally relate to all nine of them. I was all nine true personalities. Uh, you may find some people with maybe one or two, but for me, it was every last one of them. So really uncovering what personality you are allows you to really embark on how to uh, evoke change and how to go about attacking that uh, for the better. So uh, the first one that we'll talk about is the sweet tooth. Uh, you know, I define this as you physically cannot pass up a candy bowl, right? Celebration of any kind means you deserve another piece of cake. Uh, when times get tough or uh, you're liable to maybe down your sorrows in ice cream or, or turn to other sweet things to really comfort you during those times. What you eat is dictated by your moods and your hormones. So many of us deal with that sweet tooth. The salty snacker. Your cupboards are full of the processed foods. Don't like sitting down to balance meals because you're constantly gnashing on salty snacks. You reach for the salt shaker out of habit and use it before tasting the first bite. So I was definitely one of those individuals that would always go for the salt shaker instead of tasting. Now I don't go for the salt shaker, I go for the spices. And I make sure that what I cook with and what I use is full of flavor without even adding salt to it. The foodie, another food personality. This person is not, enjoys nothing but the richest, creamiest, and most decadent foods. Oh my gosh, that's, I was definitely a foodie. <laughs> Your picture of the perfect day is cooking this glorious meal for everyone you care about and tell them just how much you love them. On the Spice Diet, you can continue to show your love with food, only you'll be giving them giving them and yourself meals that are good uh, for their hearts figurative, figuratively and literally. So we really attack this area in the book because so many of us are uh, interested and so many of us love those creamy rich dishes, right? That are full of the fat and the salt and many other processed foods that give us that mouthfeel and give us that effect that makes us feel good about what we're eating. Right now, the spice diet, what we do in the book and what I give you in the book is how to get the same effect using different alternatives. And we'll get into that as well. The deep fried fanatic, AKA the drive through junkie. Oh my gosh. <laughs> you have an encyclopedic knowledge of the menus at every place where food comes from a window. You need nothing to come. You need everything to come with a side of fries. Right? You appreciate the greasy bag of food, you know? Those are the things that, uh, that I define as a deep fried fanatic. The gut buster, whether you've ever used the word binging to describe it or not, overeating is a way of life for you. You aren't satisfied unless every meal e ends with the feeling that bloated, a feeling of bloatedness, uncomfortable, um, uncomfortability. Your blood sugar levels spike and plummet like roller coasters, setting you up uh, to the repeat cycle over and over again. So the gut buster really is that person that overindulges to the point of, uh, yeah, feeling bloated and feeling uncomfortable. And, and, and I've been there. I've been down that road. Um, and it's not a great place to be. A couple of others, the chocolateholic. That's the individual that just has to have a piece of chocolate, right? Uh, so many of us uh, become addicted to chocolate. Uh, it's one thing to know, and I talk about this in the book, that there are, you know, chocolate is not a necessarily a bad thing, but it's when you get into the milk chocolates and the white chocolates that you get into the things that now you're diluting the total effect of pure dark chocolate, right? So. Keep in mind that there's a big difference from a calorie perspective and a health perspective uh, with uh, pure dark chocolate versus chocolates that are mixed with other ingredients like sugars and creams. The fizzy drink enthusiast, that's the person that has to have the, the Diet Coke or the, or the Sprite or the beverage, right? That are addicted to those cans of soda. 
and the starch softy. That's the person that has to have a, a starch or processed food with everything, right? Macaroni and cheese, baked potato, mashed potatoes, you know? Um, so keep that in mind. So we really, in this book, um, tie in these nine food personalities and attribute, um, attribute a lot of what we're going through with food cravings to these uh, food personalities. So let's talk about the spices that reduce these cravings. How do we get, how do we get to the root of these issues? How do we reduce these cravings? To reduce salty cravings, because I think salt and sugar are some of the biggest, um, are some of the biggest monsters or what I call them. <laughs> but those are some of the biggest cravings or greatest cravings that people, uh, people have. They have the salty tooth and that, and that sweet tooth. Uh, so how do you reduce salty cravings? Citrus and vinegars. The vast majority of people consume, uh, as we know, more sodium than our bodies need, right? We overindulge in this area. A great deal of it comes from processed foods that we eat on an everyday basis. You'd be so surprised if you really uh, look at the amount of sodium that we consume in a day. It could be two, three, or even sometimes four times greater than what the daily recommended value is. Our taste preferences adapt to changes in our eating patterns. Uh, keep in mind that research does show that if you cut back on sodium, you begin to prefer foods with less salt over time. So it's all about training our palates to appreciate salt less and less. That way it, uh, it reduces the craving for it. Also, using things like citrus, like limes and lemons and oranges, are a great uh, form of fresh juice or, or zest that really awakens the taste buds and provides this fresh acidic flavor that I think satisfies the salty craving in food. So what does that mean? When I'm making chicken or I'm making fish, instead of going straight for the salt shaker, I'd rather add lemon zest or lime zest or a little bit of lemon juice, right, to bring out the acidity. So it really does brighten your taste buds. So you're not really craving or missing that salt. Vinegars also uh, add flavor and are great substitutes for salt because they're pungent, right? They're, they have these very bold flavor profiles. So your taste buds are, are kind of like bouncing around and you don't need the salt. They're being, they've been alive and they've been awakened, excuse me, with the vinegar. Spicy spices. Research shows that consuming spicy foods like cayenne or chipotle powder or paprika and even dry chilies can trick the brain into craving less salt. So it's that interesting uh, balance between salt and spices. Right. So if we crave these spicy foods, which actually help our bodies, right, that actually increases our metabolism. It reduces our craving for less salt in our diet. So these are just some things to think about when we're cooking, when we're uh, trying to figure out how do we cut back on that salt, the sodium, the citrus, the vinegars, the spicy uh, the spicy things like the paprika and the uh, chipotle powder are great substitutions. To reduce sweet cravings, some spices that we use, clove. Clove is a warming and sweet spice that reminds you of kind of holidays, right? It also helps in the, for the, from a body or from a health perspective because uh, it's stomach soothing and blood sugar regulating, right? It helps regulate the blood sugar in the body. I like to add this spice to smoothies. I put it on fresh fruit. I also incorporate it in sweet potatoes, right? Which is a really, really great addition. I also add it to beverages like warm teas and things like that. So keep that in mind. Uh, when you're looking for something to, uh, uh, when, you, when you have that sweet tooth, you know, go for the clove, go for cinnamon. Cinnamon is also a great spice to use because it's a naturally sweet spice. Fenugreek. Uh, fenugreek is used in Indian and Middle Eastern cuisine. The seeds of this herb taste similar to like maple syrup and burnt sugar. So it has that kind of sweet flavor profile. Some practitioners believe that the spice is effective in managing diabetes, which is a, a nice added health bonus to it. 
Uh, I love adding the spice to spice blends and dry rubs for meat. I also add this to tea and yogurts and even dried fruit. So uh, again, fenugreek is a great addition to the spice cabinet. Some spices that reduce your appetite, which is a true winner. You want any and everything naturally that can reduce an appetite. <laughs> so black pepper and cayenne pepper boost the metabolism and can burn fat by 25%. Black pepper supports weight loss as well. Uh, and we'll get into that um, as well. But what it does is the piperine, the chemical compound in black pepper, that gives the spice its pungency can jumpstart the metabolism. It boosts the rate at which you also burn calories hours after you eat it. So black pepper is that kind of um, kryptonite, you know, it's that kind of magic spice, right, that really helps a lot in terms of burning metabolism, in terms of reducing appetite. Right? Cinnamon, another great one, right? Cinnamon works well, both, uh, again, with sweet and savory dishes. Um, just a fourth to one teaspoon can boost metabolism. I add cinnamon to everything. I add it to sweet dishes, again, savory dishes, but it's great with morning tea, a little bit of unsweetened almond milk. I like to add it to oatmeal in the morning. Uh, just a great addition to a lot of different, uh, a lot of different applications. Spices that support weight loss. So cardamom. Cardamom is an, ex excuse me, is an exotic spice that has been used to treat obesity in India for hundreds of years. And it helps your body burn calories faster and boosts, uh, boosts fat burning as well. This spice pairs perfectly with sweet baked goods and is also delicious with coffee or tea. I simply love cardamom. You can find it in any spice aisle now. Back in the day, it was pretty difficult to find cardamom. Now it's easily accessible. So I encourage you all to certainly give it a try. I like to also mix it with, with um, mix it with things like curries uh, and coconut milk, you know, and it just makes for just a beautiful fragrant blend and it's just so tasty. Mustard. I've had to swap mustards for mayonnaise. Mayonnaise, as we know, is nothing but fat oil and it's not good for us. So I've just begun to learn how to appreciate and I've grown to really like mustard. Uh, it's a pungent and flavorful addition to any dish. And uh, of course it helps with weight loss, eating at least one teaspoon of pure mustard, uh, which can contains approximately five calories, which is great compared to mayonnaise can boost the metabolism by up to 25% for several hours after eating. This condiment can also be a wonderful ingredient, like I said, to soups and sauces. I put it, I use it as a marinade or spread, uh, as a spread for chicken. If you want to kind of kick it up a notch, I like to add dry mustard to things like maybe pure raw honey, or I may add the dry mustard to a little bit of champagne or white wine, you know. Um, there's so many different mustards out there. Out there grainy mustards but i like using the pure quality mustard right try to not to use things that are full of sugar and salt and other different things because now you're just kind of going back to the same approach that you were before with uh processed foods right so try to get the pure mustard and then build your own blend right build your own uh recipe for a mustard I give you a lot of those recipes in the book as well. So architecting healthy flavor using spices. And uh, so we talked a lot about spice blends, right? So a couple of the, you know, spice blends are great because it allows you to take many different spices and create a certain, um, a, a certain flavor profile. For example, in the book, I talk about my Jamaican me jerk crazy spice blend which is great. Um, I think Caribbean food is a new trend now. People are loving it. Um, but you can take a lot of different spices, blend them to give a certain flavor profile. And then you're getting this kind of myriad of health benefits with a lot of different spices. And the flavor is just so pronounced. Uh, other spice blends, uh, I do a lot with a lemon zest and dill. I mean, you name it, you can do it with spice blends. I give you uh, 
many different spice and recipes in the book that you can use as well. Uh, but I encourage you to use those with chicken and seafood. Uh, instead of going for the salt, because these are no salt added, go straight for your spice plants, because those are your secret weapon. Easy, simple recipes. Everybody wants to know about that. Chef, how do you make these simple recipes? Uh, we don't have a lot of time. We really are on the go. We want to make them simple. We want our kids to love them. I get it. I get it. I get it. So in the book, we give over 70 simple recipes that you can do. So here's one, uh, and I'll give you an example. My Growing up, my grandfather used to do um, catfish and grits, and I remember it was, oh my gosh, the most decadent, most flavorful dish. I remember my grandfather used to put the cornmeal and the flour and the brown bag with the seasoned catfish and we did a cajun seasoning uh, from scratch that he taught me how to do which was amazing and you shake that up and then you put that in a cast iron skillet with either lard or oil or something and brenda used to fry that fish and we used to pair it with these creamy grits with heavy cream and lots of butter and salt so not healthy <laughs> but I said, you know, I still have the cravings for this. And it's nostalgic for me because it takes me back to my childhood. So I had to recreate a dish that will take me back to those moments, but in a healthier way. So I did catfish. I, I take catfish. And sometimes if I can't find catfish, I'll use salmon because I love salmon. And I'll season it with Cajun seasoning. And I, in my book, give you a recipe for a pecan crust blend, which is phenomenal. So I take fresh pecans and I pair it with a little bit of the Cajun spice, some lemon zest, some fresh parsley, a little bit of Parmesan Reggiano cheese. And I talk about using cheeses really more so for the flavor, not to overindulge. I tell people a little goes a long way. So I use a little bit of the Parmesan Reggiano cheese and I make this beautiful crust and add a little bit of olive oil and then pack that on that fish and bake it. So when it comes out of the oven, you've got this beautiful, crunchy, succulent piece of fish with this flavor-packed crust, and it is simply amazing. I think it's better than the deep fried, personally. And, uh, you know, you don't, you don't, I, I don't feel compelled to pair it with the, the grits. You know, I may have a salad with it or maybe some fresh green beans and green beans and chickpeas, you know, but these are just very simple, easy recipes that you can do. Uh, and in the book, I give you those. Core spices to keep on hand. Oh, we have to have the core spices on hand. And some of my favorite, I tell people my five go-to spices, which are uh, paprika, black pepper. I always have to have an onion powder and a garlic powder. And I like to bring in some kind of spicy, spicy spice, like uh, if it's dried chilies or chili powder or, or jalapeno powder or something that will give me that really spicy effect because I love layering my food with different flavor profiles, which is important. Um, another great thing that I'll talk about is my hot sauce, uh, which is my Chef Blend hot sauce. And I launched this in 2013 as a healthy hot sauce. It's a low sodium, less hot, more flavor product. And it's all purpose. I use it as a marinade, as a condiment. So I encourage you all, you can find it on my website as well. Um, this is another great uh, spice. I don't call it a spice blend, but it is a hot sauce. But it's great because, again, it's all purpose. And you can use it in your soups, your sauces, as a marinade. Uh, and it is very, very low sodium. It is all natural. So I encourage you all to give it a try. And I'll finish up with talking just, again, a little bit about the Spice Diet book. Uh, you know, this presentation was really based off of really understanding food cravings and how to combat those food cravings. I gave you a very high-level approach, uh, probably a lot of information thrown at you. But I encourage you all to purchase the Spice Diet book to really get into the detail of this information and really understand how we can live healthy, how we can eat healthy with flavor. The one thing that I am set out to do is to dispel the myth that healthy food is lifeless and bland. 
I am encouraged and I encourage you all to understand that by eating healthy and cooking healthy can be just as much of an experience as if you were going to a restaurant or even for some of us driving through the uh, drive through window. So I encourage you all to please check out the Spice Diet book. You can purchase the book, like I said, at Amazon, Barnes & Noble, both online and in the stores and at local bookstores. You can go to www.thespicediet.com for more information. And you can also visit my social media, my Instagram at, excuse me, Judson Todd Allen, my Twitter at Judson Todd Allen, and Facebook at Judson Todd Allen. The Spice Diet also has its own Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter page at The Spice Diet as well. Thank you so much, and I hope you are now ready to embark on a journey of all things spice, all things flavor, and most importantly, all things healthy.